Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakak Wadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a quick lesson uh, speaking on the second exodus, you know, that we're fastly approaching, you know, as Akiyam and Akwaf. Uh, you know, we're well aware, you know, of the history, you know, of the first exodus out of ancient Egypt. When Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai used Moses to split the Red Sea and to, and, to, and to deliver his people, man. You know, and we understand that it was it was everyone at that time. You know, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai delivered everyone. You know, but this time around, only the elect of the nation of Israel, that remnant, those that turn from transgression in Jacob are going to be delivered. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. You know, and upon being delivered and being and being transitioned into that second covenant, you know, we are going to come back into a time of complete dominance, man. <laughs> like in the time of King David, completely dominating these heathen, man. And, uh, and this time around, it's going to be on a whole nother level. You see, because our forefathers at that time, they weren't immortal. You know, they didn't have the divine uh, power that we're going to have this time around. When the second covenant activates upon the second exodus taking place, man. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the first scripture I wanted to get into, let's start here in Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Let's start at verse. Um, let's start at verse five and it reads. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And that's Yahweh Shai. Remember, he's the seed and the offspring of David. Pursuant to Revelations, the 22nd chapter. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And this is what's going to be going on <laughs> when a so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans come into power, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Justice and judgment is going to be being executed. Okay, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to raise up the tabernacle of David as it's written. Let's go get it real quick in Amos. We'll come back. The book of Amos chapter 9 and verse 11 and it reads, In that day, in what day? <laughs> in the latter days, in the days to come. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. And in the days of old, what was King David and his mighty men getting into, man? They were dominating, man. King David was setting up garrisons on these heathen. We, Jake was flexing on them. Because of King, because of the work that King David exercised and the blood that he shed, that's how the forty years of peace was possible under the under the uh, reign of Solomon, his son, which was Yahweh Shai. If you can receive it, you see, King David was completely dominating these heathen, man. Matter of fact, let's get it. Let's get a glance of what he was getting into. Let's go to um, let's go to Second Samuel real quick. Second Samuel, the eighth chapter. Real quick, right? And then we're, we're going to go back to that Jeremiah. 
Uh, let me see. I want to go straight to the point. But to, but to get the context. Let's start at verse 10. Then Toy, or two, right, uh, sent Joram, where two was a, um, he was the king of uh, Hamath, all right, which was a city in Syria, right? Then, then, then two sent Joram, his son, unto King David to salute him and to bless him. Why? Because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. You see that? And Hadadezer. Uh, he was the he was the king of uh, uh, where was that at? Syria. He was a king in Syria, but I forgot what province that was. Matter of fact, let's do this real quick for edification. You know, let's let's get this real quick. Strong's H, 1909. Hadad Ezer. Hadad Ezer. Okay, Hadad Ezer, right? Biblical use. His name means Hadad is help. Uh, son of Rehob, a king of Syria. Zoba. Zoba was the province, okay? Deve defeated by David's army. You see that? Zoba. It was Zoba I had forgotten. So it's good to go into these things, you know? For edification. And to, you know, bring out, you know, bring out good information for, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. You know, this is what it's all about. So his name means Hadad is help. All right, beautiful. All right, let's go back. Let's continue on. Then two sent Joram, his son, unto King David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. So King David put him down, man. And his whole army, right? For Hadadezer had wars with two, see? And Joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, right? So, yeah, two was paying tribute, man, to King David, man. <laughs> Which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued, see? So King David was subduing nations, man. When the tabernacle of David was erected, this is what was going down. And this is what we're coming back into. All right, here we go. Who did he subdue? Of Syria and of Moab and of the children of Ammon. You see that? And of the Philistines and of Ammonites of the Japanese, might I add. Right? And of Amalek, the chief house of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. You see? And of the spoil of Hedadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. <laughs> there it goes. It's, it, it said it right there. King of Zoba. You see that? Let's get a little more. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. They put down 18,000 men, man. And he put garrisons in Edom. You see, and what's a garrison? A garrison is what? A military base, man. Okay? Throughout all Edom, put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. You think these, these, these devils uh, don't know about this? This is why they don't teach about King David in the school system, man. <laughs> because they were serving servitude to King David, man, which was an Israelite. King David, man. See, hey, if they teach about King David, they're going to spill the beans, man. They're going to spill the beans. They can't, they can't teach about King David. They will be found out. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom put he garrisons. And all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. This is what we're getting back into. This is what we're getting back into through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This is what we're coming back to. Let's go back to that Amos 9 real quick. Upon that second exodus, <laughs> hey, it's going to be showtime. The book of Amos chapter 9, right? Again, in uh, verse 11 again. In that day, 
And it reads, Salakia, the book of Amos chapter 9 and verse 11, and it reads, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. And you've seen how David was executed, man. The days of old, complete dominance, man. Subduing in, uh, the heathen, man. And this is what we're coming back into. Continuing on, the book of uh, Amos chapter 9 and verse 12, and it reads, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. See that? And of all the heathen, which I call by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. So this is what you devils have to look forward to, along with you heathen, upon a so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans being delivered. This is what this is going to, this is, this is what, the transition's looking like. <laughs> all right? The remnant of Edom's going to be possessed. And all the heathen. Why? Because you got to serve out a thousand year captivity, man. There's a thousand long, drawn out captivity you damn heathen got to serve. Whether you want to or not, you're going to serve it. You're going to drink from that cup. See, let's go back to that Matthew 23. Hey, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is beautiful, man. This is why we need that deliverance ASAP. ASAP. Let's get this. Um, bear with me. So lucky. Yeah. I'm thinking Matthew. Back in that Jeremiah 23. Right, let's continue on. In verse 6. Did I finish that? Kind of dead. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6 and it reads, In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And in this and this is his name, whereby ye shall be called the, the Lord, our righteousness. Yahweh Bashimi al is going to allow this, man. He's going to execute this, man. Yahweh Bashimi al is going to save us, man. Through his mighty right arm, Yahweh Shai. And there's no way around it. And this, this, and this second exodus is going to be like nothing this world has ever seen. See? See? Remember, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, we're talking about they're super Jakes, man. <laughs> and you know how Jake is down. Jake got style. Jake got the salt with the salt of the earth. You know, you know how Jake gets down. Jake likes to show out. Jake likes to show up and show out. This is why, this, hey, this second edge is going to be like nothing this world has ever seen. And this is why the scripture says this. Let's get into this, right? Let's continue on. Continuing on in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 7, and it reads, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> Why, Lord? Let's continue on. But the Lord liveth, which brought up in which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. What's this talking about? North America, man. Mystery Babylon the Great, spiritually Sodom and Egypt. You got North America, Central America, and South America. The majority of us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are in North America. This is why the chariot sightings, if you don't know, look into, look at, look into it. The majority of the chariot sightings that they're spotting is over North America, man. Right here over America. Mystery Babylon the Great. Because the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. And he's about to destroy it off of the face of the planet Earth, man. That's why. And the greatest deliverance is going to come out of this land. Where this man has shed our blood throughout all four corners of this land, man. Rape. Rob, pillage, and molested our people, man. 
and got free labor off us, man. This is where Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming to execute that day, that day of doom is going to be exercised here, man. Hey, the whole world's going to feel it. You better believe it. But Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is that lake of fire that John the Revelator saw, man, in the book of Revelations. This is it. This is that landmass where 200 million warheads are going to contact, man. Thus says the Bible. Let's continue on. Okay? Let's continue on. Let's read this from the top. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. You see? And from all countries, whether I had driven them. You see that? Because why? We were scattered. Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28 and 64. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get that. And they shall dwell in their own land. And this is starting with the elect. Oh, this, this starts with the elect. This uh, got to make that clear. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is not coming to deliver everybody this time around now. And we can easily prove this. And we're going to through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But let's grab, um, let's grab this Deuteronomy 28 and 64 first. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. In verse 64, and it reads, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are obsessed with with the wine of Christianity. Obsessed with it. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. You can't pry you, 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 you uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans off of Christianity, man. You're drunk off the wine of evil E. But that's fine, though, because this is only for the elect. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number, Akiyam and Akwa. Lord willing. But back, sticking to the point. This is why Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is only coming for the elect. Because only the elect is going to turn from transgression. Only the elect are going to uh, no longer lean upon him that smote us, which is evil E. Pursuing the Isaiah, uh, what's that, Isaiah 10? That remnant shall return. The remnant of Israel. Let's get this Matthew 24 real quick just to make the point that the Lord's only coming for the elect. He's not coming for all you, you, you he's not coming for you wicked niggas, man. And when I say you wicked niggas, I'm talking about you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. You all niggas, man. Matthew 24. Let me see. I'm going to start at um. I'm going to start at verse 29, even though verse 31 is the point. But I got time. Let's bring it out, right? The book of Matthew, St. Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 29, it reads, Immediately, immediately after the tribulation. Of those days, and this completely cancels out uh, the the rapture doctrine for you wacky, tacky Christians out there. And when I say Christian, I mean it in the modern sense of the word, because we're the true Christians, which goes into Hamashiachim, the followers of the Anointed One, man. Us us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, starting with the hopeful elect, those of us that have turned from transgression through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what tribulation? Jacob's trouble, man. After all, after all hell breaking loose, man. And right before the missiles come, let's continue on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. You're, you're not going to be able to find this truth anywhere on this planet Earth. Okay? The mouths of the men of the Lord are going to be shut. And judgment is going to be being executed, man. What's that? Jeremiah uh, 15. I believe it's Jeremiah 15 to the to the to the captivity, to the captivity. Right. <laughs> uh, <to laughs> Lord and I might have to go get that if, if the spirit allows. But I believe that's Jeremiah 15. I don't want to I don't want to misquote that. I want to stay on point. But let me just see something real quick. Kind of is here. 
Let me just read it real quick. The book of Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 1, and it reads, Then said Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Right, you wicked, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You are high-headed, stiff-necked, disobedient, hard-hearted people, man. And the only way you're going to learn is after death by pain, pursuing the second Ezra 6. No, Salakia, second Ezra 9, man. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, thus saith the Lord, such are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. That's all you're going to be having to look forward to, okay? And the, when Jacob's trouble hits, man, for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that didn't want to listen and repent and turn to the Lord while you, well, you could have. Let's continue on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Back in Matthew 24 and 29. And the stars shall fall from heaven. The missiles, man. Those stars that are going to fall from heaven are those missiles, man. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You see these damn devils, the rulership of these heathen, starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Pursuing to the book of Job, I believe it's the book of Job, it says this man, he's going to be shooken out of power, man. He's going to be shaken out of power, man. You see? Let's continue on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Can you imagine this sight? Man. Scripture says, all I shall see him. Let's get it real quick. Revelations. Let's see. Revelations 1 and 7. Real fast. The book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. And it reads. Behold, he cometh with clouds, which are the chariots. That's a hard saying for the chariots, the clouds. And every eye shall see him. He's going to be on that fathership, man. Yahweh is going to be on that massive fathership, man. And they also which pierced him, who pierced them? The Romans. This also gives credence to what? Reincarnation. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Uh, right, it's going to be judgment time, man. Only the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be rejoicing upon this moment. Let's go back. Continuing on in the book of Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31. And here's the point. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Yeah, because remember, he's coming with thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of angels pursuing the Psalms, the 68th chapter. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven. To the other. And we grabbed that. And we already pulled out that uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. That's why they're going to be going to all four winds, man. Which is the north, the south, the east, and the west. Because we've been scattered all over the earth. And the elect is our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. The Israelites. It's not you heathen nations. We can simply prove. Let's go to Revelation real quick. Here's who the Lord's coming back for, man. Starting with the men of the Lord. You see? The 144. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number, Akiyam. The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 1, and it reads, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind shall not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree, and that's going into the destruction, that when. As a matter of fact, let me prove that real quick. What's that? Is that Jeremiah 50 and 1? I want to say it is. 
Or is 51 and 1? Khan, it's 51. Khan, let me get this real quick just to make that point. It's going into that destroying wind. That the missiles, man. That destruction. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 1. And it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon. This is talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. This is a prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. You see? A little more. And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her. And she'll empty her land. What do you think that's talking? The missiles, man. Those intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to empty this land and turn it into a lake of fire. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. And that's all I needed from that. I want to stick to the point. Well, let's continue on in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sailed the servants of our power in their foreheads. You see who is this talking about? And I heard the number of them which were sailed and there was sailed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel, man. All men. Okay? Remember, Scripture says the pastor of the Lord's flock are men, man. See? Men. Let me jump down real quick because that is it, not just 144. All right? There's also going to be an innumerable multitude. Let's get it. Verse 9, right? The book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. This consists of the rest of the one-third. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, right? Men, women, and children, all right? Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. See, that's talking about all the heathen too. No, we brought out Deuteronomy 28 and 64. For those of you out there that just can't let go of that Christianity, you can't let go of that universal doctrine. We brought out Deuteronomy 28 and 64. This is, it said, this is why it says that. Because we will be scattered throughout all four corners of the earth. This is, this is part of the curses, man. Let me read this from the top. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Victory, man. Victory. Yasha Allah, we're going we're gonna to get that victory, man, at the end of the day. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number to take part, you know, of, uh, to, be, take, to take part of, this, of the first resurrection, man. We want to take part in the first resurrection. We don't want to get caught up in that second death. We don't want to get caught up in that. So, Lord willing, we're able to endure until the end, uh, you know, and strive, strive for the truth, you know, fight for the truth until the end, man. Lord willing, we're able to do it. Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua deals with us to the end, and the phone chimed in. And the phone chimed in. You know, Lord willing, we can stay locked in. Lord willing, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua continues to deal with us, man, because we know He's coming. You know, uh, the majority, the masses don't know. The masses don't believe, but we know. And when he comes, <laughs> what scripture say, he's going to come roaring out of Zion. I got to close up with that right there. I'm going to close out with this right here. Um, Is that? Yeah, that's Joel. I'm going to close out with this right here. If the spirit allows. I wanted to bring this lesson out <laughs> all day. But I stuck at the plantation, stuck at work. Stuck in this captivity, man. Vexing. But guess what? What did, uh, uh, what's it saying? Uh, what's that? Micah 7 and 9. I would bear the indignation of the Lord. You see, we have to bear this indignation, man. 
we transgress. We sin against the Lord. Let's close out right here. The book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 16 it reads, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, man. He's, I don't see any other nation named there. He's not coming roaring out of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Ham. He's not roaring out of Moab. He's not roaring out of Ammon. He's not roaring out of Edom. No, scripture says, he is, he, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Zion in the Paleo Hebrew goes into what? To Zion, which means what? Memorial or monument. Yasha Allah. A so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Zion is also another way to say Jerusalem. This is, this is, this is. Where the Lord's going to come roaring out of, man. And what's he going to do? And utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel, man. Point blank. There's no way around that. There's no way around that. Malachi, what's that? Three and seven, three and six. I'm the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. His people are our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And nothing will ever change that, man. And this is who he's coming back for, starting with the elect, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number, Aki Aminakwaf, Abba Rathaza. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Wedash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakata Yahweh. Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. Shalom.